Hey, what's happening, y'all? Your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a video about our newly signed tight end, Samus Reyes. I hope that's how you say it. That's how I've heard most people say it, but I want to know how his family says it. But at the end of the day, right now, I think it's tight end Samus Reyes. I'm really excited about this signing. Big shouts out to Louis T for being extra early on this. I saw somewhere that Ken Burgundy was also early on this as well. Shouts out to Rich and Jaymon who were trying to put me on early as well. So, shouts out to everybody. If I missed anybody who was also early on them, I apologize. You know, go get your credit in the comment section and I'll like it up and everything. And give you your flowers now and all of that. I'm late. And it's crazy because I'm always the guy that's looking for... For the next type of guy like this one. I'm the one that was really hoping we got Jordan Mailata. And then the Eagles ended up getting him. I mean, I even mock drafted him coming to us during the offseason before the Eagles got him. So it's just like, it's crazy that this one slipped under my radar, man. It's crazy because I'm normally looking for these type of guys. But hey, man, you win some, you lose some. But I'm just really excited that we got him. That's what matters the most. I don't care if I'm late, early, whatever. He's on the team. And in this video, I'm going to break down to what his background is where he came from and all of that and we're going to look at his athletic profile and why he's potentially one of the most athletic guys in the nfl we're also going to look at some comps and then i'm gonna give y'all the overall little back analysis and summary at the end let's get it All right, so Washington signed tight end Samus Reyes earlier today. Well, technically yesterday, as in Tuesday, April 13th. He came to the U.S. from Chile to play basketball, and he had a crazy day at Florida's Pro Day. That's where his name first started buzzing. He played D1 hoops at Tulane and was going to be a part of the International Pathway Program, which is where a lot of guys from outside of America, that's their way to the NFL. That's their channel. That's their opportunity. But since we went ahead and signed him, he didn't have to really be a part of the program. He was one of the 11 international prospects selected for this year's International Pathway Player Program because they do it every season. That's where we got David Bada from. These prospects from around the world spent the last few months training with NFL coaches to have a chance to be one of the four players allocated to a team's practice squad. So they basically try to at least get four guys onto teams in some way, shape, or form. But luckily for us and Mr. Reyes, he's on our team, just straight up, just on the team, not even necessarily on the practice squad as of right now. He's been working on his inline blocking drills with NFL coaches because we're going to get into how much of a freak athlete he is. I have some like crazy stats and information that's going to really put it into perspective how ridiculously rare a specimen this man is. But as of right now, so far, he's been working on inline blocking drills. And of course, he's been working on his hands and route running and things like that. But back in high school basketball, he was putting up 24.6 points per game, 13.2 rebounds per game, and 2.6 blocks per game. Like, that's ridiculous. And you know when it comes to basketball players, their leaping ability and their ability to high point balls in the air is just unmatched so i feel like at the very least with his ridiculous strength and size and his ability to high point the ball as long as his hands are good at the very least he's going to be a decent to good blocking tight end day one and a red zone threat again only if his hands are right and i know even just beyond his athletic ability and his high ceiling his freakish athleticism his crazy potential you could tell ron rivera brought him in also because of his attitude if you look at his some of his interviews he's one of those like i'm just gonna do everything i can to give it my all i love the process not even just the results i love the process he's that type of guy so you know he fits ron rivera's culture very well and he's just a smart guy he knows multiple languages he's an econ major like these are the type of guys that ron rivera wants involved in the team guys that work their hardest even when they're not being watched guys that demand greatness out of others i mean how can you sit around a guy like this just as another player if you're just like another tight end on the team trying to make the team or if you're just any other guy receiver whatever and samus reyes is over here working his tail off you can tell he's grinded all the way from chile to get here and he's gonna give it a 110 percent all of the time how have you see him doing that do you not do the same attitude and work ethic like that is contagious that's why ron rivera wants as many guys like that in the building jonathan allen montez sweat chase 
Chase Young, Terry McLaurin, Ryan Fitzpatrick, just exceptional leaders. Again, a personality, a work ethic, an attitude like that is contagious. That's why Ron Rivera wants as many top to bottom as possible. Once the culture is created, Ron Rivera doesn't even have to do as much work anymore. And even just back to Samus Reyes alone. You know Ron Rivera doesn't have to worry about this guy coming out every day, every practice, every game, giving it his all. He's worked his way up from the bottom. He knows that this is a very unique opportunity. Statistically speaking, he shouldn't be here. And again, you can tell from his interviews that he knows all of this. And that's what motivates him forward. Also, and we're going to talk a little bit about this more later, Logan Paulson spoke about how like most basketball players converting to the NFL most notably tight end their biggest struggles are with physicality yeah they can jump high they're smooth their footwork is better than what people expect and of course there's the mental side of the game too but logan paulson ex burgundy and gold tight end said that physicality is easily what basketball players struggle with converting the plates for the nfl that is their toughest transition and he says that after working out with samus reyes he knows that samus reyes is physical he knows his strength and he said even by just the way his body is built, he could add on even more weight if he needed to. But he's already 260. And we're going to talk about his athletic profile soon. But before we get there, I love how this signing is a win-win. Because it costs us nothing to bring him in here. But, I mean, his ceiling is ridiculous. And I love the fact that we're searching everywhere for talent not just doing the bare minimum and being like we'll draft a guy we'll we'll pull a proven commodity from the free agency no we're going digging and trying to find guys that we can develop in the future stars again it's a win-win because even though he's a long shot if he works out he's gonna work out very well but if he doesn't it costs us nothing at all now i want to take a look at his athletic profile which is probably why most of y'all are here first of all he's six six 260 pretty much all muscle i mean you can see him he's all muscle he has a 40 inch vertical like what's going on with that a 10-5 broad jump 31 bench reps come on and a 465 40 yard dash at 260 now montez sweat ran a 441 at 262 pounds so he's not quite as fast as montez sweat but we're gonna dive into how he's a ridiculously freak athlete in other ways more so like explosion and things like that but just pure straightaway speed he's not gonna be the fastest guy he's faster than he should be for 260 pounds but he's not montez sweat fast so let's go ahead and get that out the way like in comparison to george kittle out of the 2017 draft class, George Kittle weighed 13 less pounds, but ran a 0.08 faster 40 time. And George Kittle had a 35 inch vert compared to Samus Reyes 40 inch vert. George Kittle did 18 reps. Samus Reyes did 31 bench press reps. And even Darren Waller, another converted basketball player into tight end. And a lot of people consider him arguably the most athletic tight end in the NFL right now. He's 22 pounds lighter than Samus Reyes and ran a .14 faster 40 time. Darren Waller ran a 4.46 compared to Samus Reyes 4.6, but again at 22 pounds lighter. His vertical leap was 37 inches compared to Samus Reyes 40, and they had the same exact broad jump. So you could say that Samus Reyes is just as explosive as Darren Waller. And Darren Waller only did 12 reps on the bench press. Samus Reyes did 31. I'm just trying to put it in perspective how strong this guy is and why logan paulson said that the main thing the titans struggle with is physicality samus reyes should not struggle with that at all and even to compare him to kyle pitts i know a lot of y'all have seen this graphic already that samus reyes is one inch taller 15 pounds heavier has a 6.5 higher vertical did nine more bench reps but of course he ran a slightly slower 40 time now granted 444 to 465 is a pretty big difference but at 15 pounds heavier again i'm not mad at it I'm not mad at it at all and when it comes to the ras athletic system they're saying that he tested the most athletic size adjusted tight end to ever enter the nfl according to the system and that includes kyle pitts who a lot of people are considering like the rarest of the rare tight end prospects of all time at least potentially and this system uses size adjusted to emphasize that this is based on as if everybody were to be like the exact same height and weight and things like that like that's how they do their calculations for the athleticism is based on pound for pound what do you offer as far as athleticism goes and they're saying that pound for pound 
size adjusted, Samus Reyes is the most athletic potential tight end ever at the NFL. Because Kyle Pitts received a relative athletic score of 9.64, Samus Reyes received a 10U. This is out of a 10 scale. And if you go back and forth and compare every little metric and point that they isolated, size grade for Kyle Pitts, okay. For Samus Reyes, it was great. Like Samus Reyes and Kyle Pitts both have great heights. Samus Reyes has a great weight while Kyle Pitts' weight is in the red. Kyle Pitts had an okay bench rep with it being in the yellow. Samus Reyes had a great bench rep with it being in the green. His was a 9.92 out of the 10 as far as score goes. When they compared explosion, they said Kyle Pitts was great. They said Samus Reyes was elite. Vertical wise, Kyle Pitts has a, an okay vertical, gave him a score of slightly less than seven. Samus Reyes has almost a 10, 9.91. And when it comes to the broad jump, Kyle Pitts did a little bit better, 9.88 score compared to Samus Reyes 9.65, but not a huge difference. And then when it comes to their speed grades, just overall, Kyle Pitts got elite, of course, and Samus Reyes got great, which makes a lot of sense. Like when it comes to the 40 yard dash, the 20 split and the 10 split, Kyle Pitts scored 9.86 or higher in all of it. Whereas Reyes scored 8.9, 8.91, 8.63. 8 Again, green all up and down, great up and down, and he leaded certain things. But Kyle Pitts is of course a little bit better than him at certain things like speed and broad jump. But just overall explosion, overall size, Samus Reyes has the advantage. Kyle Pitts just has the advantage in speed, and Samus Reyes didn't do any of the agility stuff. So we don't know his agility, but Kyle Pitts rated good in agility in the yellow. Again, Samus Reyes is an unknown there. So we'll have to see how agile he actually can be because I think that will be important as far as him being able to get open by himself in the passing game. But a lot of these guys aren't agile. George Kittle isn't very agile. He's open because of Kyle Shanahan's scheme. Really, honestly, the only tight ends out here getting like truly open on their own are honestly Darren Waller and Travis Kelsey. Everybody else is for the most part schemed open. I mean, even Logan Thomas, as much as we like him, he's not out here just yeah yeah getting open by himself man coverage as he schemed open by scott turner and samus reyes is going to be even more explosive and more athletic than him so if logan thomas is open samus reyes should easily be open but now we have to see if he can run routes better we're gonna have to see what his hands are like is he a consistent dependable catcher so far in clips we've seen he looks like he can be but in practice and in game is completely different and once he gets into like a real practice like 11 on 11s not just running drills with cones type of practice and the physicality is there like i've spoken about several times the strength the aggression everything is there for him to be a great blocker the only worry is will he know the mental side of it the technique the footwork and things like that and if anybody can get it out of him, it's Pete Honer, because he already got it out of Logan Thomas, who was literally a quarterback when he was drafted to the NFL. And Pete Honer took him from week one Logan Thomas to week 14 Logan Thomas. That was Pete Honer getting them ready, and now was Scott Turner learning how to use them. Now let's get to some comps, because this was really fun. Like I already said, he could be the Jordan Mailata of tight ends, but I feel like he may even end up being better at his respective position, whereas Jordan Mailata is a tackle, Samus Reyes will be a tight end. I think Samus Reyes will end up being a better tight end than Jordan Mailata will be as a tackle, honestly. Not sure about it but I, I have a good feeling man again just based on his traits what he can do and the things that he'll have to learn how to do i project him to actually be pretty lethal not saying he's gonna go out there and be travis kelsey or darren waller soon if ever but the potential is definitely there and i'm definitely higher on him than a lot of people may be again just based on how logan paulson broke him down based on his athletic traits, comparing him to other guys like George Kittle, Darren Waller, and even Kyle Pitts coming out right now, even with some of the mental and technique things he needs to work on, there's still a certain floor to him, just off of his strength and athleticism. But speaking of Logan Paulson and back to the comps, Logan Paulson said that Samus Reyes reminds him of Jimmy Graham, but just a better athlete, which is crazy. That's that's ridiculous. We can get better Jimmy Graham out of Samus Reyes. This offense is literally potentially elite. We're just going to be looking at the quarterback like, hey, 
you, you got all these weapons, what you gonna do with it? Everything around you is ideal. And if we don't trade up a quarterback, a Samus Reyes turning into a better Jimmy Graham would potentially only make Aaron Rodgers want to come here even more in the offseason. You know what I'm saying? Ken Burgundy, one of the people that was early on Samus Reyes, said he comped Samus Reyes to Antonio Gates, another converted basketball player. But Samus Reyes is two to three inches taller and 20 pounds heavier. So this is why it's hard to comp him because he's just this huge guy that just, they don't make him like this. They just don't. It's hard to exactly comp him to somebody. And just to let y'all know, Antonio Gates, Darren Fells, Mo Ali Cox, Rico Gathers, Marcus Pollard, Eric Swoop, were all basketball players that turn tight end. No college football experience. Shouts out to KDHTTR91 for this tweet because that's a really good point. Even Hall of Fame success to an extent. And again, it's hard to comp Samus Reyes because he's just built different. Guys just aren't out here getting a 10U relative athletic score. RAS like people just not out here doing that especially a tight end again Kyle Pitts has a 9.64 score Sam is Reyes is a 10 out of 10 so again like the comps get me excited and I'm like man better Jimmy Graham bigger Antonio Gates potentially better Darren Waller those things get me excited but there's just no exact comp for him so it's really hard to project how much he's gonna actually succeed at the NFL level but again just based off of his potential and athleticism and traits and what he can already do I think his floor is higher than a lot of people give him credit for, but his ceiling is limitless. We all know his ceiling is limitless. He's never going to be the fastest guy on the field, but he can be one of the most explosive, one of the strongest, and just overall a top apex athlete out there on the field. And I love the fact that we're bringing guys in like this, Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, William Jackson, Chase Young, Montez Sweat. We have guys out there that when in doubt, they're the best at something on the field. They're either the fastest, they're the most athletic, they're the most agile, they're the biggest freak. I mean, they're just something. They're the best at something. Before we even get to technique, before we even get to the mental side, just physically, they're the best at something. They're the most something at something on the field at all times. I love the fact that we're building a team like that. A very intimidating, aggressive gritty team that when in doubt you're gonna hate the players because you're gonna be hurting the next day or all week after you play us at the very least you're not leaving this game unscathed when you play the burgundy and gold that's the type of roster we're building that's why ruben foster would have been so perfect for it man hey ruben foster was gonna be perfect but moving on let's get to some of the after analysis and some thoughts that i have first of all like i mean we talked about logan thomas several times in this video already but like i want to really emphasize that People really didn't have expectations for Logan Thomas coming into last season. And I was one of those people that's just like, be patient. The potential is there. He's athletic. He's just very new to the position. He was drafted into the NFL as a quarterback. He's working on learning the tight end position. And learning the tight end position is very difficult because you have to learn how to be a receiver and a blocker. You're learning two positions at the same time. And Logan Thomas ended up being one of the better dual threat tight ends in the NFL. He's a very good blocker. You never had to worry about his blocking. Think about it. As much as we complained about Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis blocking, even as great as they were in the passing game, we always worried about them blocking. We couldn't run the ball their way. Or even a lot of the time, we couldn't have them on the field when we were running the ball, which allowed defenses to know exactly what we're doing. We're telecasting it. Jordan Reed and Vernon Davis are not on the field. We're running the ball. If they are on the field, we're more than likely passing it because we're afraid to run it the direction anyway. Logan Thomas came in and shut all of that down. We finally had that dual threat tight end we've been waiting for for a very long time. Effective in the passing game, not early on, because Scott Turner had to learn how to use him. He had to learn to start to catch the ball more consistently and work on random nuances to get a little bit more open. But at the end of the day, Logan Thomas is not as athletic as a Samus Reyes is. So he's not really able to just yak and get open on his own, like a Travis Kelsey or maybe even a Darren Waller. Even so, with all of the odds against him, we saw Logan Thomas go from week one Logan Thomas, where people were like, man, I don't know if this experiment is gonna work. I think we were even like week five, looking around like, man, this Logan Thomas guy looks like he's not cutting it, to around week 12, week 14, we're like, oh yeah, this the guy. Tight end one right here, we're good. We just need a tight end two now. So at this point, 
Washington and more specifically tight ends coach Pete Honer and offensive coordinator Scott Turner definitely need the benefit of the doubt at the tight end position as of right now. Until further notice, P. Honer and Scott Turner get the benefit of the doubt with these tight ends. And I'm expecting big things out of Sam as Ryers, honest. Wouldn't bet my life savings on it, but again, I think his floor is higher than a lot of people would give him credit for. And not only is Logan Thomas's presence good for if we can get it out of Logan Thomas, we should definitely be able to get it out of Samus Reyes. But most importantly, Logan Thomas can even help Samus Reyes with a lot of things. Because just like a lot of the little things of transitioning from doing one thing to another thing. Granted, Logan Thomas went from quarterback to tight end. Samus Reyes is going from basketball to tight end. But still, there's going to be a lot of little things that Logan Thomas can be like, hey, man, make sure you pay attention to this. Make sure you do this with your footwork, with your hands. These are things that I struggle with trying to learn the position. So, you know, I'm going to give you a head start. You can just go ahead and start doing this like this, like this. Don't do this because that's what helped me go from this to this. I feel like that's going to help in a major way. Him telling him those little things is going to be a big help because he's literally done it before. Even just the way you stretch before practice, even maybe even what you eat and things like that. Just the very little things, technique, what you're looking for, how you should practice, what you should practice, how often you should practice those things. All of those little things. P. Honer, of course, is going to coach him up but logan thomas can also give him the view from a player that also transitioned from a different thing granted it wasn't a totally different sport but again a completely different position and i'm not gonna lie if you were training to be a quarterback your entire life i would argue it's harder to go from being quarterback to tight end than basketball player in certain ways it's easier in certain ways harder in certain ways and i think at the end of the day it really equals out because again logan paulson said the biggest the biggest transition for tight ends going from basketball to football is physicality and if you your whole life practicing trained everything 24 7 365 working on being a quarterback you're not going to be the most physical tight end if anything you're used to being protected by the rules the refs by the team everything and logan thomas did it so again samus reyes should be able to as well but just to even dive deeper into who pete honer is remember this is the guy that worked with vernon davis back in san francisco during his best years from 2006 to 2010 and then he was also the tight ends coach for carolina from 2011 to 2019 so greg olsen so pete honer has a really good track record but specifically for this situation it helps a lot that he already did it with logan thomas i mean grant it if we would have brought in Samus Reyes without Logan Thomas ever existing, I still would have been excited. Like, this is the guy that worked with Vernon Davis. This is the guy that worked with Greg Olson. But him working with Logan Thomas and getting him to go from quarterback to how good of a tight end he is today is far more impressive, in my opinion, and far better suited for this situation. Now, at the end of the day, though, we're not just going to bet the farm on Samus Reyes. I love his size. I love his blend of athleticism and potential. And I think at the very least, he's going to be a good blocker, at least a very strong blocker. But I still think we should go tight in in the draft at some point, potentially like in the you know top five rounds or something like that i'm a big tommy tremble guy i feel like tommy tremble can be like the next george kittle honestly wouldn't bet my life savings on it not depending on it but hoping for it as i say a lot of the time and i've even spoken about tommy tremble in several videos and live streams as well the reason i compare him to george kittle not exactly saying he'll be that good but it's the same situation george kittle had in college bad quarterback play in an offensive coordinator that didn't know how to use him but when utilized and when actually thrown to and allowed to show what he could do big flashes huge flashes of potential and talent the exact same thing with tommy trimble in notre dame with ian book subpar qb play and an offensive coordinator that i mean either doesn't know how to use them or just reluctantly uses them i don't know why when you have a guy with this much potential and tommy trimble why you don't use them but hey man george Kittle went in the fifth if tommy trimble makes it to the third i'm personally pulling the trigger but all in all my favorite part about all of this so far and this is directly from my own tweet is that before is that i love the fact that this front office and coaching staff is leaving no stone left unturned they have trustworthy eyes everywhere and anywhere and what's very important about that is that rivera is willing to listen to any scout so like somebody found samus reyes 
and Ron Rivera has a system in place to where he can be like, hey, Rivera, check out this guy right here. I think he's really good. Or maybe they went to Eric Stokes first or whoever and presented, hey, this, this Samus Reyes guy has a lot of potential, a lot of athleticism. I think y'all should take a look at him. And then Rivera and company have a system in place to where they're like, okay, I like what I see from what I've seen a little bit of. Let me do some deeper research. And I love the fact that they can collaborate and be like, all right, y'all, everybody's down to bring in this guy, Martin Mayhew, Marty Herney, Chris Polian. Everybody signs off on this guy. And then they went and got him. And then we have the coaching staff, again, at Pete Honer and Scott Turner, that Ron Rivera trusts to get greatness out of them. Now that they've already shown that they could do it with Logan Thomas and Rivera just went on a limb and gave them the trust to even try Logan Thomas out. Gave Scott Turner the trust to even try an Antonio Gibson who he took with a third round pick. I mean, Ron Rivera has already shown that he trusts these guys very early on. But now with Logan Thomas under their belt, I'm pretty sure Rivera's like, oh yeah, any tight end you think could come in here and be great, go ahead and bring him in. Of course, he's gonna do his own review and his own film, his own research and things like that. But at the end of the day, he clearly trust these guys to do their job and i love it that's huge for me positional coaches and offensive coordinator defensive coordinator and head coaches just the coaching staff in general that can develop guys is huge because talent evaluation is half of the job developing guys is the other half and that's huge knowing how to utilize them and everything all part of the development process because we've seen what we did even just last year with jd mckissick logan thomas cornelius lucas reviving ronald darby and wes schweitzer this coaching staff brings out the best in guys at the end of the day and that's what i love we weren't shooting 100 percent from the field last season but we were definitely in the higher percentages above most nfl organizations if not all of them as far as just getting the most out of the talent that we had but even just back to the scouts I love the fact that they're just digging for anybody. They're not just doing the bare minimum like I spoke about earlier in this video. They're not just, okay, we're going to watch these draft guys or, you know, potentially these free agents that have already shown how good they are at the NFL level. We're going to dig and look for just random guys anywhere. If you're athletic, we're going to at least take a look at you. They probably saw him at the Florida's Pro Day and was like, who is that? We need to really take a deeper look into him. A lot of teams just don't even feel like dealing with the headache of trying to bring in a guy like Samus Reyes and trying to develop him and work him from really raw to being really good. But our team, again, is not being lazy. They're not cutting corners. They're digging everywhere, leaving no stone left unturned. They're searching any and everywhere for talent. And then I love the fact, again, that we have a system set up, a collaborative effort to where just a random scout can see a guy like that present him to the rest of the front office and scouting department and then they can work it out talk it out and see if he's worth bringing in and then again we have the coaching staff that can get the most out of him if this coaching staff cannot turn samus reyes into greatness then honestly who can and i love the fact that we have one of those coaching staffs that you can say that if we can't do it who can especially at the tight end position we've seen because Bill Belichick's a genius, but he took two tight ends in a row last draft and all of them flopped. So at the very least, we have the edge on the tight end position. And even like the last part of my Twitter thread, it's, it's funny how this tight end room consists of a basketball player, a quarterback, and then a bunch of just guys. I mean, just some guys out there. And I'm somehow excited about it. Again, it's more so just the benefit of the doubt in this coaching staff and this front office to make the right decisions and to be able to develop guys and get the most out of them. But I mean, it's really crazy when you think about what our tight end room looks like. Again, I still feel like I would love to go get a Tommy Tremble in the draft at some point, but I'm really excited about this tight end group, man. I'm excited about this entire team overall, but now bringing in a guy like Samus Reyes, y'all know how I feel about my freak athletes. The Jordan Mulattas, even just like the, the hybrid linebacker safety type of guys like Kyle Duggar, Jeremy Chin, Isaiah Simmons, those type of guys where you don't exactly know what you're going to get. But if you have the right coaching staff, you can get greatness out of them. Man, I'm so excited about these type of projects. These are my favorite guys to watch during the offseason i know a lot of people love quarterback i know a lot of guys love certain offensive players people like to see like chase young dominate who you're almost sure is going to end up being great but the thing that really gets me to really pay attention to otas and mini camps and training camp and things like that or projects like the like a samus reyes this is what i'm most excited about in the offseason 
period again the quarterback battle competition seeing chase young and the defense dominating how william jackson's gonna fit in seeing how explosive this offense should be compared to what we've had for like over the past 10 years again that's all exciting this is gonna be one of the most fun training camps we've ever had probably at least in a long time but again the thing i'm most interested in just me being a gm me being the scout that i naturally am i love watching guys go from high school to college to nfl i mean i'm heavy in the georgia recruiting and even if guys don't go to georgia if i really like them as a high school player i keep tracking them all the way from high school to where they go in college like justin lowe for example i really wanted him out of cali he ended up going to oregon i'm gonna track him all the way from high school to oregon to where he goes to the nfl level even if he doesn't go to washington like that's just how i am i'm just super scout i'm super team building i'm draft guy i'm gm at the end of the day, I'm straight GM. Burgundy and gold above all else, but at the end of the day, in the deepest part of my heart, I'm straight GM. Team building is my favorite part. This offseason stuff is more exciting to me, honestly, than Sundays. I'm sorry, that's just how I am. So, like a Samus Reyes, I'm super excited to see how he's gonna turn out. Oh man, I can't wait. I really, really hope he ends up being great. Again, I'm not one of the guys that's early on him, so there's no credit to really even take. Shouts out to everybody that I shouted out that was early on to him. Again, there's no stake for him working out and being great. I just love seeing guys go from super raw with a lot of potential to being super great. I love that. That's my favorite part of football, literally. Again, like the Kyle Duggars, the, the Jeremy Chins, the Isaiah Simmons, the Antonio Gibsons at running back slash receiver. Now the Samus Reyes at tight end i just these this is my favorite part of football as y'all can tell how excited i am about this signing i'm so happy that we went and got a guy like this because that just reflects a certain type of coaching staff and front off a signing like this shows me that this burgundy and gold front office and coaching staff is exactly what i've wanted it to be for so many years now i finally have the coaching staff and front office that i've wanted but yeah man this video ran probably longer than i expected i'm not gonna lie but definitely get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this signing i know i'm a little late wi-fi was out last night so i had to get this video out today i had to finish recording re-record some parts and finally upload it today but i just wanted to make sure i did a very in-depth dive on who he is what he can be his comps his athletic profile and just overall analysis of his game and what he could potentially be and why i believe he may end up working out so Again, video ran a little long, longer than I expected, but again, I mean, as you can see from the past five minutes, I'm really excited. So please get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this whole thing. Please like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification every time I release an informative and opinionated video like this one. I'm coming out with my dream case scenario mock draft sometime this week. I have another mock draft I'm coming out with, the super realistic, the one where I'm trying to guess as many players that this team will get as possible, including undrafted free agents. So that's going to be by far the most realistic attempt at my mock draft. That's going to be probably a week before the draft. So expect that like a week from now. Of course, I'm coming out with more and more film sessions, more and more live streams. So stay tuned for all of that, man. Plenty of content coming y'all way. And as always, I really appreciate all of the support, man. Everybody that pulls up to every video on live stream leaves a like and encourages everybody else to leave a like and shares it out to everybody else in the world so that we can add more family members to the street scores family and of course man i super appreciate everybody that donates to the channel man i can't tell y'all enough how much i appreciate it and big shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors who name you see scrolling on the screen right now man i really appreciate all y'all really do for real catch y'all later i'm out